So let's sum up the sequence stratigraphic evolution of the Guadalupian in Texas. So at first we have previous to the Guadalupian two carbonate formations, the Yeso and Victoria Peak uh, um, formation, so, so carbonates. And you can see they formed a gentle ramp. And then at the top of this comes a base level lowering. So we have a, a low stand characterized by sand, again, both in the basin and on the uh, platform. And then after this, of course, base level rises, and that gives rise to the lower San Andreas formation. Notice that there are cutoffs that are formed at low stands that represent erosion and the position of, uh, of uh, clastics. So if we look at this evolution, we see that we have a regression of the shoreline, so a progradation of the carbonates during the Yeso and Victoria Peak, but the San Andreas formation represents a transgression of the shoreline, so a, a retrogradation of the carbonates. So the carbonates during the lower San Andreas do not keep up with accommodation space. However, this changes after the lower San Andreas because then we have evidence for a maximum flooding surface and now the San Andreas formation starts to prograde. So the, the production of, carb of carbonate outpaces the production of accommodation. And of course, you still have lower order sea level changes. And every time you have a low stand, you have accumulation of sand in the basin. And that keeps on going, but the San Andreas clearly is progradational. And at the end of the San Andreas, we have a significant pile of sand deposited in the basin. That's one of the uh, reservoirs in uh, the systems. And then above the San Andreas formation, comes the Capitan Formation, also um, associated with the Seven Rivers uh, Formation in the, uh, in the back. So you can see that we have evidence for progradation again here of the carbonates, but also evidence for a steepening of the geometry of that system. And that keeps on going. And during low stand, of course, we have sand. During high stand, we have carbonates. And really, we can we have good evidence that the system is completely prograding into the basin and feeling this, uh, not completely feeling the basin, but prograding into the basin and feeling some of the accommodation available in this Delaware basin. If you were to look at some logs through that system, this is what you would see. You would see in the back of the system some nice plastic sands that could potentially be, be good reservoir. And there are characterized by you know, high gamma ray. And you also see the sands in the gamma ray that are associated with the slope and the basin. In between in the reef, very little sand. So the, the reef is not where you'll have most of the sands. So now at the end of the deposition of the Guadalupian carbonates, we have evidence for increased evaporation, probably because we had increased isolation of the basin and deposition of a a uh, formation known as the Castile Formation, which is an evaporite that is deposited not just in the salinas on the platform, but also in the basin. So, so we fill this whole thing with, um, with uh, an evaporative um, layer, and this is like a, an ideal top seal. If we sum up the evolution of the system, we've seen already that we have a regression during the HST of the Yeso and Victoria Peak formations, followed by a transgression, so retrogradation of the lower San Andres, and then from the upper San Andres all the way to the upper uh, Guadalupian, the upper Capitan formation, we have evidence for a regression of the shoreline. The carbonates are completely feeling accommodation. So this is a very large scale HST if you want. Although in between we have of course smaller scale HST, LST if you look at higher order sea level variations. Now, the whole system is tilted during the formation of the basin and range um, mountains. And so now the whole system in the subsurface has a tectonic dip to it. And this is important to understand the emplacement of oil and gas because in the basin, we have organic rich 
uh, limestone that can produce oil and oil will then come and follow the bedding all the way to, in the first instance, the upper St. Andrews Formation where it ends up being trapped by the Greyberg Formation because the Greyberg Formation forms a seal. It doesn't have good permeability and porosity. The second system that we have is when the oil comes from the basin, it can follow the sand of the basin, follow the reef because the reef we'll see is fractured and go straight into the back reef of the uh, El Capitan formation and then ends up you know, forming oil accumulation right at this location. And so this is a stratigraphic trap again because the, the lithologies beyond this are those Salina lithologies characterized by um, mudstone that are maybe not very permeable, but also by the deposition of gypsum that acts as a, a trap. And of course, on top of all of this, we have the Castile Formation. And one thing I've not mentioned is that a lot of these limestones are dolomitized at the back of the reef, and we'll see what the implication for porosity and permeability is when we look at diagenesis. So let's sum up what we have seen here in this example from the Guadalupian of Texas. We talked about the concept of reciprocal sedimentation when you have clastic during low stand in both the uh, shelf and the platform, sorry, the shelf and the basin. We also said that karst is not common but can exist in this system. High aridity leads to lots of evaporation and so potentially evaporative deposits in the back reef or if you push the system too far you could also completely evaporate the basin and cap the carbonates by evaporites which are a great seal and that's exactly what happens in the Permian Basin here. We've seen that we have a steepening of geometry over time in the Guadalupian and this is very similar to what we've seen in the Bahamas previously. So we tend to have steepening of the geometries. And I think really I cannot insist enough that the Permian Basin is a good example of why you should beware of using modern analogs. By all means use modern analogs but you need to understand the ecology of the particular system you're studying yourself. So in the next class, we'll talk about M-Factory Sequence Street.